many people in the world that go by one name? Elvis, Madonna, Beyonce, Zendaya, and Senor. <laughs> Spanish teacher, a person who from the start was there to guide them through the fun but challenging world of foreign language. For me and other students who do not have the pleasure of him as a teacher, we have gone to know Senor from youth voice and or being in the sixth grade. Senor, being the lead advisor in the sixth grade, gets to know each girl very well. I had the great honor of being in the 6S advisory. While being in his advisory, I got to know Senor on a level I never thought I would. He was there to listen to my, our rants about the drama in sixth grade, and also there to help us if we were having trouble in the class. He would reach out to the teachers or just pull them aside in the hall to talk about the troubles and or worries of his advisees. As well, as well as being a teacher and advisor, Senor helps with co-mentoring the youth voice officers. Since I was elected to a youth voice position, I got to know Senor as a person who I could look up to as a leader. And sometimes we can be really hard to rein in. Sorry, Senor. <laughs> you are also there for us in coming up with ideas and events for our classmates and the upper school. Senor, you have taught us a lot, but I think the most important idea you have taught us is to embrace the mistakes we make. Whether one of us makes a mistake, makes a conjugation mistake in Spanish, or we make a mistake in youth voice, you are there to help us with a smile on your face. And that is why I think the class of 2018 respects and loves you. Senor, I truly believe in my heart that the reason the class of 2018 chose you to speak for us at graduation was because you've always wanted the best for all of us, even though you don't teach everyone. Your laughter and kind energy booms through the upper school halls, and that will be greatly missed by all of us. As we enter our new life in high school, I believe the lessons and ideas that you've taught us will stick with us forever. Now, Senor Saavedra, to most Hispanic teacher, but to class of 2018, a mentor. Although not all of us know how to say gracias, we touched each of us in different ways. Gracias mille, merci beaucoup, and muchas gracias. <laughs> send you on your way into the world of advanced academic studies and young adulthood. You are all on the brink of a big change, and change is good, especially when it is a change that will move you along in your journey of life and bring you growth in many different areas. But change can also bring up emotions, happiness, sadness. I understand this emotional response. One day you're dealing with your regular day-to-day -day dealings with, your, with people that you have grown to appreciate, perhaps admire, and grow fond of over the years. Change can also be frightening. It can be uncomfortable not knowing what will come next, or sitting in the darkness of the moment and not knowing a particular outcome. You have all become very comfortable at Berks, and we, and I think I can speak for my colleagues, 
on this point. We have taken great delight in your comings and goings on campus and in your relationships with each other, with your teachers, and other Berks adults. Berks has become your second home, a sort of intellectual home. And now comes the time to move you all along to another home. So it's been years, actually decades, since I have been in this position of delivering a full-blown speech to a large group, and I think in a few minutes you'll see and understand why it's been so long. <laughs> it is humbling to be here in front of you graduates and your parents, families, friends, and Burke's faculty, staff, and administrators. What humbles me the most is recognizing the very eloquent and wise women that have stood in this very same spot at this same podium for this same exact occasion in previous years. Women who have spoken to other works graduating classes who are strong role models and examples to each and every one of you. It's a little intimidating, to be honest, as I recall the messages given by Lisa Turner, Susan Deemer, Nio Brooks, and Ashlyn Bryant. So, after so many years of listening to sage advice from these powerful women, this honor, this year, comes to a man. So, I am here to say that men can be wise. <laughs> Sometimes. It depends on the day. <laughs> so I will try not to disappoint. So in sitting down and actually committing virtual pen to paper to write my comments for today, I thought I would refer to the musical in which you all participated just last week, Mulan. Great job on it, everyone. <laughs> What could be a better theater piece than the story of a young woman who defies the sexist practices of imperial China in order to serve her country and to honor her family? Passing herself off as a young man is not an unusual theme in Western literature and an idea that has been used by Shakespeare and Mozart. Robin Williams, in fact, did it in reverse for the movie Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> I then looked more carefully at the lyrics of some of the songs that make up this Disney work. Last year's musical, Mary Poppins, was beautifully suited to the theme, go out into the world and thrive, and don't forget the kite. <laughs> Yet upon closer inspection, I realized that some songs, Honor to Us All, and A Girl Worth Fighting For, were not exactly what I was hoping to find for a message to empower young women. And I'm not even touching the song, I'll Make a Man Out of You. <laughs> I think that speaks for itself. So, maybe this musical may not provide the point of inspiration on which I want to base my remarks on today. I went back to reflect on what the graduation speakers of last year's have discussed in their remarks. 
And with the power of modern technology and the Catherine Del Mar Burke's YouTube account, I was able to re-experience the words of these women, our previous graduation speakers. I have to admit, it seemed that they had hit all the major points that we, your teachers and advisors, have reminded you about day in and day out. Be true to yourself. Don't be afraid of hard work. Remember to say thank you to the people in your lives. Value the people that cross your paths. And remember that well-behaved girls never make history. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're a television reality star. <laughs> So these are important messages for all of you. And anything else may seem superfluous. By the way, that's an SAT word. It's probably never too early to start. <laughs> Finally, something clicked, which leads me to the heart of my message today. Uncharted territory and totally worthy of discussion. But before I reveal it, Allow me to provide you a little context of my personal experience with this idea when within the framework of girls' education. My professional experiences of 31 years have taken me to many amazing places and have allowed me to work with even more amazing people. I've taught university and graduate students the poetry of the Divine Comedy. I've advised and counseled high school students throughout the college university process. I've taught second graders the beauty and majesty of the itsy bitsy spider in several languages. And all of these great experiences have prepared me well for my work here at Berks. Throughout these years, I noted a trend and a mindset that some of my former students acknowledged and embraced in their lives. I myself was also a member of what I will refer to today as the cult of perfection. Perfection. We are in awe of it. Sometimes we fear it. Other times we are eluded or confused by it. Do we really even know what perfection is? In my 11 years in girls' education, I heard over and over again how girls as a group like to please the people important in their lives, be it friends, teachers, employers, and family members. And boy, was this not the case with my younger sister, but that's another story. <laughs> so I have noted how the search for perfection is like the quest of many a third or fourth graders' search of that elusive white unicorn. Ooh, I hope that wasn't a spoiler alert for anyone out there. <laughs> I would imagine that for many of you graduates, perfection is achieving 100% on an assessment or an assignment. No errors on a Spanish vocabulary quiz? Perfect score. A flawless lab report or history paper that displays good exploration of a hypothesis or a historical argument, perfect job. Performing strongly in a, sour, in a, excuse me, in a soccer game and covering your position in an accomplished, skillful way for a perfect victory. What is perfection and what does it bring us? 
I frequently see in my classes the student who completes an assessment, which incidentally parents, assessment is the 21st century reward for a test or quiz, um, in a relatively short amount of time. So we have a student finishes a quiz, a couple minutes, short amount of time, sitting in her desk, exhibiting emotional pain and laboring and perhaps internally even beating herself up for not remembering one specific thing. And it kind of goes like this. So I see the hand, and it needs to be in a whisper because in the middle of the assessment. So it kind of goes like this. Senor, <laughs> I don't remember what dejar means. A student may say to me. Well, I usually respond, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> but how's the rest of the quiz for you? Did it go well? And almost always, admit it girls, almost always the student will nod her head yes, which gives me enough time to scan her paper. And yes, she's right. The quiz did go well for her. You're fine, then, is my usual response. Don't worry about that one. But senor. <laughs> is often what I hear in a painful plea. So we talk about teachable moments at first. And this particular one, um, fortunately, in the middle of a silent assessment, does not present itself at the most opportune time. Do the best job that you can do, is my response. That's all I ask of you. And graduates, that's what all of your teachers ask of you too. So I searched for some quotes by famous thinkers and minds of our time to support my argument and provide some inspiration. I was successful in finding encouraging words from great minds like Thomas Aquinas, Rigoberta Mentutum, Simone de Beauvoir, Albert Einstein, and Gloria Steinem. I was tempted to use their quotes but then was reminded by a colleague that I am writing a speech for a commencement ceremony and not writing an article for People magazine. <laughs> so I found three short quotes, very suitable for today's occasion. One is from a television actress, another from an iconic football coach, and the third from a member of our very own Berks community. So quote number one, and this is from Vince Lombardi, legendary football coach of the New York Giants, the Washington Redskins, and the Green Bay Packers. His quote is, perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. So, Coach was on to something. Perfection is, in fact, not attainable. Not real, consistent perfection. While a student may enjoy multiple perfect successes, the act of not achieving perfection, or, dare I say it, even failure, are important in life. If perfection is not achieved, is the consolation prize excellence? If so, fine by me. The most important fact is that I've given my very best. The second quote is from Deborah Messing. She's an award-winning actress from the sitcom Will and Grace. When you're passionate about something, you want it to be all it can be. 
But in the end game of life, I fundamentally believe the key to happiness is letting go that idea of perfection. So this quote tugs at my heartstrings in a pleasantly aggressive way. <laughs> I love passion, and I love to see it in the people around me. I also greatly value happiness, and I will be the first to say that happiness is definitely not overrated. Please don't question it if you have it in your life. Please don't expect a more perfect version of it. Letting go of expectations of perfection will bring you greater peace and the thought of knowing that your very best is, in fact, perfect enough. In some regards, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that unicorn many of us were hoping to find. And finally, quote number three, which comes from our very own Dana Perkins, who graciously worked with me in the preparation of my remarks for today. So there's nothing like having the uh, teacher of public speaking grab your back, right? <laughs> so her quote, the quest for perfection does not always allow for personal growth. No words were ever more truthful Way to go, Miss P. <laughs> we as human beings are works in progress, and we will be until our final day. It is my hope, graduates, that you all live in a state of constant learning and growth. And I'm not referring to academic disciplines like math, science, or English. We constantly are growing to be better people in many capacities, whether it be student, friend, daughter, sister, partner, colleague, parent, spouse. It's all a part of human growth and the human experience. Okay, graduates, it's time for me to wind down my comments to you. You have all been sitting very patiently Listening, listening to me go on about the pitfalls of perfection. Ultimately, it comes down to being a personal decision. I have regaled you with advice from my perspective, as well as provided quotes from more lofty, well-known individuals. Each of you will ultimately decide what is best for you. <clears throat> Listen to those older people, actually I'm gonna do away with older and say more experienced. <laughs> so listen to those more experienced people around you, and by this I mean your parents and your teachers. Yes, those adults who have a profound and genuine interest in you, and in your well-being. I hope you all realize that you have been loved, cared for, and valued during your time here. As one of those more experienced adult voices of this celebration, I want to share one more thought as we move along in this beautiful ceremony. So as a language teacher, my interests have taken me beyond the joyful experiences of teaching vocabulary, <coughs> verb forms, the imperfect versus the impreterate, remember? <laughs> Allow me to deviate for one second from the Spanish that I have taught some of you, but to another language that is also near and dear to me. There is a line from a famous Italian poem of the 16th century that I want to share briefly with you before I conclude. So the poem was written by the Renaissance leader, Lorenzo de' Medici, of the powerful Florentine banking family 
and patron of great artists. And the line goes like this. Quanto bella giovinezza che se fugge tuttavia. Chi vuol essere lieto sia. Di domani non c'è certezza. How beautiful is youth, yet it is constantly fleeing. <coughs> Let those who want to be happy, be happy. For tomorrow there is no certainty. Graduates, make your youthful lives happy. Make your interactions with others peaceful. Make your experiences of life rich and fruitful. And know that at the end of the day, when you have given the very best of yourselves, you have made a great impact on your lives and on those of others. Last page, I swear. <laughs> I wish you all happiness, love, success, and my personal favorite, peace. <clears throat> and finally, I say this to my advisees who come to success for a year and then move on to seventh grade. And I feel that it is important to say this to each and every one of you. Please visit us often and know that you will always have a home at Burks. Blessings to each and every one of you. Tante belle cose, many beautiful things. Thank you all. Congratulations. Felicitaciones.